Hey, this is Anthony Hannigan. Welcome back to musicmoose.org. We are going to get into some general basic music theory. We've had some uh, demand for this, and we're going to see how it flies this first time around. Now, keep in mind, everything here is unscripted at the Moose. We are very loose. And um, so if you hear some things that we've missed over, we'll be sure to get it in one of the future lessons. But also, what we're trying to do, too, is put some text along with the messages, too. So right underneath the video, you can kind of get an idea. It's very important to go and read over that, too. Um, I'm trying to keep up with this as much as I'm pu pushing the lessons out. But there, very soon, there should be some pretty much explanation of what's going on here. And tab two, which is also going to be up very, very soon. Well, what I have here to my, um, your right, my left, is pretty much an alphabet. Okay? An alphabet of notes. They could be chords if you want them to be, but you know, for right now, we'll just think of them as notes. But for those that are learning chords for the first time, you can also think about them as chords. And I said earlier on, you know, it's as easy to learn this as it is the alphabet, but you only have to take it up to G. That's pretty much how simple it is. Dave and I have been working on another chord. It's called the H chord, but we can't use that yet. So it's in it's in its uh, legality stage. But once we get the H chord, we'd be the first ones to hear it here at the Moose. But basically what we have... A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Self-explanatory. You can pretty much get into the habit of counting them off, too. And if I were to show you on the mandolin, pretty much with the A string, how this all works. I'm leaving out intervals here, but we're going to... As a matter of fact, I'm going to jump right down to the intervals, too, so it'll make a lot more sense. Here we have our A chord. Dave was so kind to break it down into uh, the flats, too, and we're going to describe how the, the sharps and the flats... It's pretty much the same exact thing um except for when they write out sheet music for songs they will call it different um but we have the a a sharp or it could be a b flat as well b there is no sharp after that it goes right to a c to a c sharp or a d flat this is all the same exact thing right here what we have is pretty much everything is up here is the same as it is down here and it'll go to a d sharp to or it would be an E flat and we have our E F and so on now if I was going to run this out let's just take a chord and I'll take a, a simple let's just do it with the A string first of all so we do A and you can count this off too this is a great great habit to get into um, because it's going to create some memory retention for you as a player and where everything is especially when people call out chords and stuff and we're going to get into that in the next whiteboard session but here we go we have A a sharp, B, C. Now if you start looking, you can see, wow, this makes sense because there's my C chord. So that is a C, up to the C sharp, to the D, D sharp, to an E. And wow, that's pretty odd because there's the E string, up to the F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and right back to the A. Now, how that works with chords, it's the same exact thing. No matter where you start, once you learn where the mod, where it modulates between the sharps and or the flats, depending on what terminology you're going to use, if someone's going to say it's in B flat, that's when you start working or worrying about what chords are going to be within that song. And I'm going to write that out in the next lesson. But let's just take a A chord, the same exact thing we just did with the scale, and run it up the same way. A, A sharp or B flat, depending on what you want to call it at the time. To a B, to a C, I can jump up here, hit the C, C sharp, to a D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, back to the A. And it kind of just repeats itself over and over. It depends on where you're going to start. Like if I obviously was going to start at the G right here. Then I would start going this way. G, then the next series up would be the G sharp and A. So G, G sharp, and then it starts right back at A again, which you can start right back here. And it works so true with everything. If we started the song in B, 
We would start B up to a C, to the C sharp, to the D, and so on. So basically getting familiar with the notes in the scale are going to be key, no pun intended, but also with the chords and the structure of the chords and how they're all formed too. And this is pretty much a simplistic version of the actual how things are going to work up and down the mandolin neck. But when you start looking at repeating things, you can see after it goes a certain distance, it's going to repeat itself. And it's really good if you're doing a chord and you want to hit that same position chord somewhere up the neck. You can, like, for instance, just take the C and say, well, it's, there's the G right there. F to a G. So you can see F two up. And you're right there on the G. And that's how things are going to start falling in perspective. So this is a great little board just to pretty much get down. A lot of this stuff is available, you know, all over the place. And any, you know, any kind of music book that you pick up, you're going to see this stuff. But it's great to just start memorizing, you know, create little tasks for yourself. You know, challenge yourself every day. Start playing some songs in C. And then just working up the neck and calling out those chords to yourself. And you'll see where you are. Well, that pretty much covers this section on a little bit of crash course of theory and of notes and chords and stuff. And we're going to get more into what chords work with other chords in the next lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again here at the Moose. Thanks.